Good morning, South Hills. Let's all stand to our feet. We're going to put our hands together. We're going to lift our voices this morning. My name is John. Words are going to be up on the screen. Let's sing together. Come on. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven Yeah, I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven my praise belongs to you forever. This is my testimony from day to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Come on, we sing. Come together, sons and daughters. Bond with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yes, He is. Our God is finished what He started. This is my testimony. From death to life, cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'll testify. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. lift our voices this morning. Come on, we sing. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. And greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Yeah. And greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. No, you're not done. And greater things my testimony from dead to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous 
righteous, I'll justify This is my testimony, oh I'm alive This is my testimony, from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story, I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified This is my testimony, this is my testimony
Dear God, we just thank you so much for this morning. Lord, we ask that you be in this place. God, that you make our hearts right and our minds ready to hear what you have to say to us this morning. We thank you so much for who you are and what you're doing in our lives. We love you. We give you everything we have, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen.
Check. There we go. Oh, that sweet sound of my voice. <laughs> good morning, Southfields. Good morning. Uh, good morning for those that are watching us online. Uh, and for those who are here, it is good to be here this morning uh, with you all. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful day outside. It's a beautiful day inside. And uh, we are inside, folks. We are, we are, actually, we are actually inside. Yes, uh, God is moving in mysterious ways in 2021. There is hope for us in 2021. Uh, but it is good, good to be inside. Uh, this morning, and uh, some of you are like, I wonder where so and so is. They said they were coming to church. Well, now that we see your true friends are, they decided to go to the 11 o'clock service, right? Uh, the reason you don't see them here is because they, uh, they decided to sleep in and uh, come in at the 11 o'clock. And so we have done, we have worked hard this week uh, to get our inside auditorium. Uh, ready to, to go with you, uh, with us, uh, get it set up. We disinfected, we cleaned, we wiped, we set up all of the technical stuff to make sure that the sound was ready to go. And uh, I just want to give credit where credit to do, is due. And so uh, for all those who came in and did their jobs this past week to make sure that we were ready to have service, uh, I just want to give you a, a round of applause um, because... Church, <laughs> church doesn't just happen, right? You don't, I know, it's, I know it's easy. You come in and be like, oh, this is great. This is awesome. And we don't really think about uh, the stuff that it takes to put on a Sunday service, especially during this season. Uh, and uh, so it's just so that you're assured each row is actually six feet. We measured it. All right, that's my OCD from someone else, uh, from the left and right of you, uh, from the front of you and behind you. Uh, we've actually done everything we can to provide a safe, safe environment. I want to thank you for those who reserved on time. It helps us uh, be better prepared uh, to welcome you all in. I uh, also want to make sure that if, uh, for whatever reason, you reserved and you cannot uh, make it for whatever reason, uh, then please just cancel it. That way it opens up uh, the, the chairs for someone else who may want to come at the 9 o'clock or at the 11 o'clock service. And so uh, I do appreciate you doing that. So real quickly, uh, a couple of uh, announcements we have uh, for you. Uh, if you are... I've been coming, if you've uh, been coming this past year and you've given uh, to South Hills, we want to make sure that your information is correct in our systems, right? We are about to start mailing out all of the, the giving statements uh, for this past year. And so if your information, your mailing information, your email uh, or your phone number has changed, please uh, uh, update that with us. We want to make sure that we send it out to the right place. And so you can scan the QR code here or uh, at the connection booth. You can, um, that's right outside these doors here. Uh, you can uh, fill out a card there and give us your latest information. That would help uh, make sure that everyone is on the same page. Also, there's a thing that I wanted to start, uh, actually January 1st, but I, I wanted to give that information in person, and so we kind of pushed it a few days, and we're going to start something new, something different. Uh, we have a Bible reading plan that we want to do for the entire year, and it's called Read Every Day. And some of you have tried it on your own, and you've succeeded. That is awesome. Some of you have tried it, and by the third day, you quit. Right, uh, And so what we want to do is we believe that there is incredible knowledge and wealth of information uh, for your soul, for your mind, for your spirit, right, uh, when you read the word of God. And so we're going to walk this journey with you. And so we have a Bible reading plan that just a couple of minutes a day, uh, we're not trying to read the Bible in a year. We just want you to read every day. And so we're wanting, we want to encourage you to uh, get the Bible app. It's a free app on your, uh, on your phone. It's a U, uh, Bay by You version. And uh, we're going to begin to post stuff every day. We want to uh, give that reading plan to you. And so if you are interested, uh, I'll, uh, tonight I'll put out the link of how to get connected with the reading plan. Uh, we're also doing that with a couple of the other campuses uh, throughout uh, South Hills. And uh, just an opportunity to 
read more. I think we all should be reading the word more. And so it's called Read Every Day. You can feel free to share it with your family and friends to join us. Um, and it's just a couple of minutes a day of reading his word along with your daily devotions and other things that you have going on there, okay? So that is super, super important. Um, also, uh, for those who do not know as of yet, we have uh, church online. We will continue to do church online uh, on uh, Facebook and YouTube. For those of you watching us on Facebook and YouTube, do me a favor. Just tell me, say hi to me, greet me, do something. Just write to us. Somebody will jump on it and, and say thank you, but just jump on and tell us where you're watching from. Uh, but we are on Facebook and YouTube both at 9 11 and at 5 p.m., All right? If you, you want to uh, recap uh, what we talked about in the morning, you can catch it again at 5 p.m. You can share it with your family and friends around. Uh, but we want to give all the opportunities we can do, uh, possibly do for our church and those who follow us online uh, to hear the message of be with us in our worship time as well. So I think that is all of the church news that I have. Um, uh, let's see here. Yep, that's all I have. So uh, let's jump into uh, this morning's message. We are dealing with a new normal. This is our reality. The coronavirus. So that was a real short little bumper there. I didn't give me time to get my clock here. Wow. Um, so we are, uh, first and foremost, I haven't greeted you personally as of yet. I want to say Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's to you and yours. Uh, I don't know how your New Year's was, but uh, mine was quiet and we did something really different this year. We, you know, us Puerto Ricans are somewhat traditional when it comes to certain things. And so we kind of cook the same meals almost every Christmas season. And so this year the Peñas decided to, to break the mold and we decided to order Chinese food. <laughs> we ordered Chinese. We wasn't cooking. We were, well, I, I wasn't cooking. My wife wasn't going to cook. Uh, and so we decided to, to order Chinese food, and it was the best decision we have made in a long, long time. We didn't, there was no stress about the who's cooking, what's being cooked, what, when to take the stuff out the oven. At, at 7 o'clock, we called Moonwalk. We're giving props to Moonwalk because I love their Chinese food. Uh, they're in Valencia, and uh, we picked it up by 8 and we enjoyed it, right, babe? We had a real, real good time. And so, uh, anyway, not that you care to know that stuff, but it is a new year. It is a new year filled with lots of hope and expectations and resolutions. And if your New Year's resolution this year was for you to be at church more often and you are here today, I want to give you a, a clap because you are crushing it already. You are crushing it already. You are here today, and I'm excited that you are here. And as the actor uh, Rob Schneider would say, you can do it, right? Uh, it, it is good. It is good to have you here, and we hope uh, that you continue to come uh, and, and be a part of what uh, is happening here at Southfields. And so today, on this first Sunday of 2021, as we enter back into our church building, I don't know about you, but uh, I've missed this place. I've missed being indoors. I've missed just the, the comfort that it kind of provides. It's like a security blanket. And so I will say this, I was surprised that all of you reserved for 9 o'clock. I, I really was. Like I told the team, I said, yeah, our 11 o'clock is going to fill up first. And then all those people that couldn't get into the 11 are going to kind of be forced to the 9 o'clock. And, and can I tell you that the 9 o'clock was filled up first? And so I was in shock. You shocked me going into 2021. It's totally different, right? And uh, some of you got used to being up this early, coming in at 9 because you want to eat breakfast before you get home, right? And, and it's just a whole different ball game being here at 9 o'clock service. And so uh, I was totally caught off guard. But I've missed being here, and we're called, kicking off a brand new five-week series titled New Normal. Right, new normal, and it's not spelled wrong, 
right? Because you'll 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 see. Because I'm gonna be like, Pastor, he can't spell, right? Especially you teachers. There's a lot of teachers here, right? You're like, oh, someone need to help. But here's here's the thing. The basis behind this is what what to do when what you thought you knew turns out not to be true anymore. When what to do when you thought you knew turns what you, when what you thought you knew turns out not to be true anymore. Here's the thing. We keep hearing about the new normal, right? The new normal. But if we're honest, if we're honest, most of us just want the old normal back, right? We want to do what we were doing before. But so, uh, as so many things in our lives have changed over these past 12 months, what if, right? Just hear me out. What if what we knew as normal no longer exists? What if what we understood, what we got used to, right, what what you're doing before is no longer normal? What if in our pursuit of normal, we miss out on important growth? Maybe what we knew as normal isn't even what's best for us. Yes, you, you, you knew normal, but maybe it's time to, to know more, to expand a little bit. With this series, we're hoping to highlight some of the cracks that were made or discovered during the 2020 pandemic and everything that ensued. Because let's be real here, right? Relationships were impacted. Finances were strained. Faith was rocked. And we lost all concept, all concept of time. And we lost all concept of proper attire for our Zoom meetings. You know what I'm talking about. And if we really want to tell the truth so help you God, a lot of these problems existed before COVID. We just didn't have to face them. Listen, there is a lot to dislike about our current reality, but going back to the way things were probably isn't healthy. Going back to normal only works if what uh, was working before was really good, if what you had before was really good, or if normal even still exists. And so together, we'll look at the idea of change, and and, and over the next several weeks, bring about four different topics in order to grow and experience greater health in 2021 than ever before. So let's... Let's start today talking about change. Let's talk about change. Let's focus on change. Now, there are a few words and phrases that we heard that we have really never used before. And then they started to come about in 2020. And, and, and now we too started to use them more than we have ever have before. Things like unprecedented, uncertain, how are you holding up, uncharted waters, distance learning, out of an abundance of caution, trying times, essential, we're all in this together. Can you unmute yourself? (laughs) Right? The new normal, spelled correctly for all the teachers. Any W, normal, right? All of these phrases or words are are words that we started to use more than ever before during this pandemic. We've all said it at some point or another. But there is one phrase that has really become essential during these uncertain and trying times as we've navigated 
these uncharted waters. So out of an abundance of caution during this unprecedented chapter of life, I think it's important that we talk about new normal, the new normal. Some people have no real issue with the phrase new normal, while others have fought against it since it first began to be used. I'm not, that's not the new norm for me. I don't want to go back to what I was doing before. I liked what I was doing before. I'm not really with this new normal stuff. It's just for a season. This too shall, you started to use scripture. This too shall pass, right? I remember that when this first started, it was, it was on, people started spray painting it on banners. This, this too shall pass. It's almost been a year and we are still here. There is a sense of uneasiness and resistance to accepting any portion of 2020 as something that may continue as part of our everyday life. Do you remember that time when, when you would look and there was something about the, something happening in, in, in Asia somewhere and you saw people with a mask on and you were like, that is silly. Why would people do that? And now we are all wearing masks. And just FYI, that mask, you might as well get designer ones. Start want matching your outfits because it ain't going anywhere. It is not going anywhere. We can all agree that 2020 caused us all to have to live and exist in ways that are not our preference. We didn't choose this. We didn't like it. This wasn't something that we wanted for ourselves. However, if we're smart, we'll begin to ask ourselves the question, in light of what I've seen, right, in light of what I've experienced, in light of what I've learned, does it make sense for me to go back to normal? Of everything that I've witnessed, of everything that I've seen, does it actually make sense to try to force the issue to go back to what was normal. In other words, what were you doing before COVID that felt normal but led to your undoing, that led to your downfall, that led to the unraveling of your life during this pandemic? The undoing in your faith, in your relationships, in your finances, what should you focus on now that you should have been focused on all along? You see, these are the questions that we should be asking instead of worrying about if some other person is wearing a mask or not. Do we really want to just go back to the way things were? Is, is that exactly what, what, what you want it to be? How do you want to live? How do you want 2021 to play out? I mean, let's, let's be honest here. Like having good smelling hand sanitizer is really important because there's some nasty stuff out there. <laughs> I am so disappointed when I go to the store and I go in and, and I go, the first initial, you smell the alcohol and you be like, okay, good. You do enough of this and you're like, whoa. I'm so disappointed in that. So having really good hand sanitizer, good smelling hand sanitizer is, is important. Right? I don't want to go back to that stuff. Right? But seeing how quickly my relationships, my finances, and spiritual and emotional health were strained, is that something I really want to go back to? Or can I be better because of what I experienced? Can I be stronger because of what I went through? Can I be wiser because of the things that I learned during this pandemic? Thank you, love. It would be tragic if in our quest uh, for normalcy, if we didn't learn any of the great lessons God had for us. Think about that. It would be really disappointing if you didn't learn something during the season that we're in. If I knew then what I know now, would my normal have looked differently? What did I learn, right, or experience in 2020 that I want to apply in 2021? 
So these are the important questions we need to be asking now as we enter 2021 in this new year. Andy Stanley says, pain without gain is a shame. Let that sink in there for a second. Pain without gain is a shame. In other words, if you got through some difficult times and you have not learned from it, then you are disappointing yourself and those around you. Because you need to learn from what just transpired in your life. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the writer says in, in seven, uh, chapter 7, verse 10, don't long for the good old days. This is not wise. In other words, stop looking to try to grab a hold of what tra- happened before this pandemic because it's already passed. It's already gone. We need to focus on what's here, what's in front of us, right? And what he's trying to teach us is that while it's important to learn from the past and appreciate the past, it is unhealthy to live in the past, right? Oh, I remember that day when, you know, teenagers are just infamous for that stuff. No, I remember when we used to do this. I used to get done. Like, we, we talk about that all the time. You know, I, I, I often make light of it. I remember my dad was, a, was an older man, and the pictures, I really didn't get to know him much, but the pictures I did see of him uh, and, and what I remember of him much later, he dressed the same, right? And I was like, why, the, why this? Why does he dress the same? And then I saw some of my other folks and I saw them, why do they dress the same? And it's because they had this moment captured in their head of when times were good. The polyester pants were rocking. The bell bottles were flipping. The tweed was going. And the hair comb over was, was, was the move. The girl's hands was there. And so they just want to hold on to that moment for the rest of their lives. And so things haven't changed. We must be fully present in the today in reality. Researchers talk about something called rosy retrospection, right? This is the phenomenon where we tend to minimize the negative moments of past experiences and accentuate the positive, right? It's almost like this tunnel vision. We only are going to focus on this one thing. Let me give you an example. A family trip to Disneyland. Right? Oh, man, it is is it expensive? It is hot, right? The long lines, the whiny kids, the back hurts, the blisters on your feet. But you remember it as a highlight because you tend to remember the peak moments, the laughs, the good times. Like, so what you pay 15 bucks for a lollipop like this big, right? But man, that lollipop tasted real good. So it's a cherry lollipop, just like every other cherry lollipop. But it was good. It had Mickey Mouse on it, right? You see, the, the, the tension of the present causes us to romanticize the past, right? The trials and the tribulations, the hard stuff that we go into makes us focus, right? Put attention on the good times we had. But this isn't a new thing, church. This is something that humans have done for thousands of years. Israel was in captivity, enslaved in Egypt up to, uh, for up to 430 years. 430 years. And I want to just highlight what took place here. And so God sends Moses, sends Moses to lead them out of slavery. But of course, Pharaoh doesn't make it easy. And ultimately, there's a a Tom and Jerry scene where, you know, the the cat is chasing the mouse, right? Ultimately, God shows his tremendous uh, power, his display of power, and a miracle happens one after another with the grand finale uh, of the parting of the Red Sea. And so Pharaoh sends all of his guards to chase after this group of people. And it gets to that point where they get to the sea and we're like, how do we, we're, we're, we're done, we're doomed. They're on our coattails, the water, we, we, we're, we're gonna, it's, it's not gonna work. 
It's not going to happen. And God displays his power, miraculous power, and he parts the Red Sea completely dry, the Bible says, for them to walk through. Right, to walk through. I don't know if you ever seen the cartoons, but I love the cartoons because the 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 the, the cartoon because you see the fish on the sides. And I was like, wow, that, that just more than anything else, that's just like, oh, I would have been like a little kid, oh, we have the aquarium, right? It, it's just totally cool to see that. But God performs this miracle and he dries the land. And after they finish crossing, and the, 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 the Egyptians are like, oh, we can do this. And they all come in, and he lets go, and he, he, God destroys Pharaoh's army before they can catch the Israelites. And so in Exodus 16, verse 1, it says, Then the whole community of Israel set out from Elim and journeyed into the darkness of uh, the wilderness of sin between Elim and Mount Sinai. They arrived there on the 15th day of the second month, one month after leaving the land of And this is super important for us to know what the time, right? Because the writer of Exodus gives us an exact amount of time here, which, again, I believe is important because he wants us, right, to know that this is, uh, what is about to happen takes place just a mere 43 days after Israel waltzes out of slavery. And that's significant. Just 43 days after God performs a miracle. Exodus uh, 16 verse 2 and 3 says, There too the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all of the bread that we wanted. But now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. 43 days after Jesus, God did an incredible miracle for them right in front of their eyes. He freed them from slavery. They go back to the whining and complaining. And it's important to know that Israel was not starving to death here. They were not starving to death. They were longing for pots of meat and bread. In other places, the writer uses the word craving. They were cra- Just like you and I crave for stuff. There is more, uh, this is more comparable to me craving pepperoni pizza. I don't need it, but I sure like it, right? Most scholars agree that eating meat was a, a rare delicacy for the common person in this time, especially for slaves and people in captivity. So after 43 days, Israel is looking back on 430 years of slavery and captivity and grumbling about how they had more food options when they were slaves. Instead of being amazed by God's deliverance, which they had cried out for, mind you, they were grumpy. They were complaining. They were moaning because they wanted things to be how they used to be. Do you see what's happening here? They wanted things to be how they used to be. Church, in the midst of change, Israel was longing for the familiar. Israel was longing for the familiar, for what was normal. When things get rough and somewhat crazy, the predictability of the past starts looking pretty good. When you're going through a tough season of life, you focus on, oh, remember when we had this? Remember when we used to? You're lying if you don't. Remember when we used to eat at that restaurant? Remember when we used to eat seat inside? Right, like it was really cool to sit inside and the fan blowing and people taking your order and and you getting your own refill. Right, remember those days? Those are good days. Right, 
You're lying if you don't think that. This is something that shows up in many areas of our lives, church. Many people don't change because they prefer the comfort of their current situation. They don't change because they prefer the comfort of their current situation, even if they hate it. Holding on to the familiar has to do with the basic instinct and the desire to keep control, which, by the way, you actually don't have control of. We want to have control of those things, but you really don't. Before you start judging me and start writing bad stuff about me on Facebook, because pastor's judging me, calling me out like that, let's remember that we have a common phrase that many of us have heard or even used, and that is better the devil you know than the devil you don't know. Better the devil you know than the devil you don't know. And so the Israelites essentially were saying, we might have died in slavery in Egypt, but at least I would have had some sense of control in that death. At least I would have had my last meal would have been some meat and bread, which is really a twisted perspective to have. In other words, I'd rather die enslaved with the ability to control my food than to live in freedom and have to rely on God and others. Ouch or amen. Either or. You see, Egypt was familiar. Egypt was predictable. Egypt was, was comfortable, even if it wasn't what Israel actually wanted. It provided for them something that was familiar, something that was predictable, something that was comfortable. Familiar in the sense that they knew what the rules were and how to survive. Predictable in the sense that it was very clear, right? It was that they had a very clear sense of their responsibility and the punishment if they didn't do their part. And it was comfortable because there is comfort in the myth of control. The idea that they were able to control their lives. Ever been in a situation for so long that, that it's not really ideal, but you just get used to it and your mind starts thinking that you're really in control, but you, you're really not? But here's the thing, church. In the wilderness, the new thing that was unfolding for them was unfamiliar. It was unpredictable and it was uncomfortable. And while there is the possibility that it could lead to something better than we could ever imagine, the unknown, right, the unknown makes us want to run back to Egypt, back to what's normal, because we don't know what's going to happen, because it's unfamiliar, because it's unpredictable, and because it's uncomfortable. And because of those things, we want to run back to being enslaved thinking that that is what was best for us. You see, the wilderness requires us to let go of the devil that we know in order to trust God as our provider and experience a new and fulfilled life. You want 20 to 21, you want 2021 to be different? Then you've got to let go of the devil that you knew and trust God for who he said he is. I want us to take a serious look at what we know as normal, how much of it was healthy at a level we could actually be proud of, and how much of it just seems preferable because we knew how to succeed by those rules. 2020 revealed the cracks and the issues in every aspect of our lives, did it not? Did you not find yourself uncomfortable? Did you not find yourself angry? Did you not find yourself lonely? Did you not find yourself struggling with certain things that came about 2020? Some that we knew were already there, but they weren't serious enough to need to be addressed to get our attention. Others that we had no idea even existed. And while we long for normalcy, 
It's important that we don't rush back to Egypt and ignore the captivity of the old way. Some of us are just too locked on to trying to get back to 2020. And I want to tell you right now, 2020, will, will, that stuff is gone. You can't, you can't get it back, Right? We serve the same God that led Egypt out of captivity and into the promised land. But they had to go, they had to go through the wilderness first. In order for us to get to the promised land, we got to go through the wilderness first. So what if, what if we thought, what, what if what we thought was normal was actually captivity, right? What if what we thought was normal was actually captivity and God is in the middle of leading us to the promised land, but you're too busy kicking rocks? I don't like this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to wear this. I don't want to eat here. I don't want What if we're just caught up trying to get back to captivity, and God is saying, man, I got, I got freedom. I have something promised for you. What if in our grumbling we're missing out on the transformation that God wants for us? The Israelites were total, weren't totally ridiculous here. The wilderness was uncomfortable, right? The, the wilderness was difficult, but it was the path to a better future and the life that they truly longed for. It was just difficult to see that in the middle of the wilderness. And I want to tell you this morning that, yes, the path is difficult, right, because you cannot see the promised land, but we must go through it. This is something Israel continued to struggle with, and God spoke directly in it when he spoke in Isaiah 43, verses 16 through 19. He says, this is what the Lord says, I, I, God, who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea, I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all of its chariots and horses. I drew beneath the waves, and they drowned, their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. But forget all that. It, but forget all that. It is nothing. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. You see, the world did not stop in 2020 with the pandemic. You just need to get into the wilderness. And understand that he is making a way. God is reminding people about all he has done in their past. And then he invites them to forget the past and focus on the new. It may not be a clear picture yet, church. But we're invited to perceive it. We're invited to, to, to say, man, I believe God is going to do something new. This is an invitation to see something that isn't finished yet. The truth is present in creation itself, the changing of seasons. This is present in humanity, in the development of the human body. And this need for change is present in every aspect of our life, although it's never It's almost never comfortable. So let me wrap this up. This is where we begin to try to figure out how do we, how do we take what we've listened or heard today and apply it to our daily life. So you say you would love for everything to go back to normal, right? That's what most people are saying. And I get it. I really do. There's so much about the current reality that's exhausting. There's so much about what's happening right now that's frustrating and and challenging. For many people, it's brought about anxiety and chaos, frustrations, right? But God is inviting us 
to forget the past and move towards the new opportunities and life in front of us. God is asking us to say, hey, I know what you've, what you've experienced, right? But let's, let's bring some hope into this. If we are open to it, we can, we can be changed. We can be transformed in ways that allows us to experience greater faith in 2021. That allows us to experience healthier relationships in 2021. A deeper sense of identity and clarity with our finances. It's not some quick fix. Not saying that at all. It's not like an a, a easy three-step process. I'm not selling you an infomercial here with a money-back guarantee, right? It will require you to put some effort into it. It will require some work. To do it, we'll have to stop longing for Egypt and trust that God is making a way in the wilderness and providing rivers and streams in the wasteland. Living in Puerto Rico, there were times where we would just look out and it was so green and and be like, man, how do you get to that house over there? (laughs) That's a beautiful house over there. I don't see a road. And and so some of these people had to go through the wilderness to get to that house. And even though we, we see what's in front of us doesn't look good, in order to get there, we can't wiggle our nose, wink our eyes snap it, clap it into existence, we're going to have to go through the wilderness and trust that God is making a way. And so church, are you willing to be open-handed with the past to release your sense of control and choose to pursue new things in this new year? And so I want to leave you with something practical. Right? I want to leave you with, with some homework. Over the next few days, I want you to make a list of the things that you missed the most. Make a list of the things that you missed the most because acknowledging and grieving uh, what we have lost is critical to our ability to move forward. So jot that stuff down. Jot the, the restaurants, jot the shopping, drop, put in there all of the things that they're going to sporting events, whatever that may be, the things that you miss the most. Put them down. And as silly as some of these items may be, right? Because I, 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 I really enjoy sitting at a restaurant. I know, it's great. I just, I just like it. I like sitting there. I like having a selection of stuff. I like taking Noah and watching Noah play on the basketball court with that. It doesn't happen. But I want you to write down these things, no matter how silly they are. Grieving what you lost will help you relive those moments that you were longing for in the past. And it will also allow you to open, to be open to the river springing in the wilderness of 2021. I believe with all my heart that God's gonna do something incredible. I believe with all my heart that God's gonna do things that you never thought was possible in this new year. I believe that he's going to change lives, that he's going to change the lives of people that you love, that he's going to provide for you in all aspects, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and financially. But we have to let go of what was normal and aspire to the rivers and the streams that God is doing and making for you in the wilderness. Change. Change is good. You may not like it now, but change, specifically the change that God, the new things that God has for you, 
is good for you. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we bless you. And we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace, Lord. We pray that as we end our time here in your word, Lord, that you would help us begin to do a work inside of our hearts in 2021, Lord. We're asking you to move. Move us, Lord. Help us not to hold on or desire to be in captivity, Lord, but to walk out in this new freedom that you have for us in 2021. Behold the new things, Lord. Help us to see, Lord, the new things that you're doing in our lives. The freshness, the opening of new doors and new opportunities. Maybe it's a new level of creativity, new hobbies, new gifts and talents that you are unraveling for us, Lord, that you're bringing out of us that was always within us, Lord. But in this new season, you're asking us and wanting us to do something fresh and new. So, Lord, help us. Help us to detach from what was normal and to step into the new normal, the new things. And so that in the end, Lord, we can say, oh, glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. You deserve it all, Lord. You deserve all of the credit because you knew before I could see. You knew what you had for us before I could even understand it. So, Lord, do that new thing in us. May we open up our hearts and our minds and our spirits, Lord, for the fresh rivers and the streams and the wilderness that you're making in 2021. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. What an incredible word, right? Let's give God a round of applause. Listen, we hear it said that we, don't, we shouldn't leave the same way that we walked in. I don't know about you, but I'm not leaving the same way that I walked in at all. That's an incredible series. Great message from Pastor E. Here's a funny thing. This morning I said, E, can you help me put my bracelets on? I didn't know what he was preaching. He doesn't preach it to me as practice before you guys hear it or anything. Uh, he was like, sure. When he's on my bracelets, he was like, oh, wait, is it Throwback Sunday? And I was like, why? Because these are from the 90s. They're like the colored gold with the little colored studs and my nameplate. And now that I heard the message, I was like, ah, that's where that was going. Um, so, yeah, I love the 90s and I love my jewelry. I'm glad I kept it. <laughs> but I won't wear it again. No, <laughs> um, before we head out, we're going to um, talk about our giving. Uh, this is part of our worship experience, too. It's um, giving back to God, um, what's already his, technically. And you guys know that there are many ways that you can give. There are four ways, particularly, in which you can give your tithes and your offering. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for um, sowing seeds um, that God gets to multiply in our lives so that we can do all that God has called us to do. Um, if you're on Facebook, the same, you can go ahead and give um, through any of the methods that you see on the screen this morning. Um, if you are going to give by envelope, uh, right outside these doors, there is a Connect station and you can find the envelopes there and you can drop off your tithes and offering in a basket that is provided. If you are visiting us for the very first time, and I'm scanning really quickly, um, yeah, there's nobody visiting for the first time, but if you're watching us for the first time, we'd love to be able to connect with you. Go ahead and uh, reach out to us so that we can get to know you better. Before we head out, guys, we are going to exit only through the side door. As you know, we have an 11 o'clock service that will start in a little bit. Um, but we welcome you to go ahead and connect with each other right outside. We've 
um, made some space for you. I'm going to call you by sections until we get the hang of how all of this is going to go for us. Okay. Thank you for coming this morning. You look wonderful. Have an incredible, incredible week. As our worship team starts to play, we're going to start with um, my far left. Pastor E is out there as well to greet you guys. Go ahead. This section right here, you are welcome to exit. And as one section leaves, the rest will follow in that order. Okay, you guys are next. This is my testimony from death. All right, have an incredible week. Thank you. Christ wrote my story. I'll testify. But Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. Oh, I'm alive. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause Christ wrote my story. I'm justified. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony.